When we purchased our home five years ago, one of the things I was most excited about was being able to add smart devices into the home, as you can tell by this channel. Well, the very first product that I got was the Nest Learning Thermostat. This is the second generation, and honestly, I have zero issues with it. It has worked really, really well. Well, Nest has come out with a brand new product, the Google Nest Thermostat. And today we're gonna find out what it's all about. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech with Brett, where I help tech work for you. So through this video, we're gonna show you how to set this up and everything it can do. So this is the charcoal edition. It also comes in snow, sand, and fog. So over here on the side, it says that this is the Nest Learning Thermostat that works with most 24 volt systems, including gas, electric, oil, forced air, variable speed, heat pump, and radiant. Now, if you're not sure if your system is compatible, you can just head to the compatibility checker by going to g.co forward slash nest forward slash works, and that will help you know if your system will be compatible with this thermostat. Here on the back, it just says that it's going to help you save energy, and here it says proven energy saving features. Now, I've had my Nest thermostat for five years, and I had it as soon as I bought the home, so I don't really know how much it saved, but I can say I think it will really help you save energy on your heating and your cooling bill. So it's easy to set up and use, and you can control from anywhere with the Google Home app. Now this is compatible with Google Assistant, but you can also use this with the Amazon Assistant if you link the Google Nest skill. So let's go ahead and see what's in the box. So in here, there we have the Nest thermostat, it has this nice mirror reflection right on the front. And then on the back here, it does have two AAA batteries, a setup code, and then some pins that you will plug right into the thermostat. Here in the box, we have our setup guide. So we're going to download the Google Home application, make sure you have the latest version. We're going to select plus to add a thermostat and then follow the instructions on screen. And then here it also has a base plate, wall screws, and you have these wire labels to identify the different wires so that you can get this set up very easily. And here are some links if you do need help. So on the device itself, we have a touch bar that we can swipe up or down to change the temperature. You have status and alerts, current heating and cooling mode system alerts, target temperature, so the temperature you want to reach, and then you have current temperature, the temperature in your home. So that's all that's going to display on here. And then if you touch the bar, you can bring up the different options. So you have different modes where you can uh, change to heating and cooling. You have hold where you can keep specific temps for a certain amount of time. You have fan to just turn that on when you want. And then you can adjust the settings and check your battery and network status. And then here we have the mounting plate. It does have a built-in level, so that makes sure that you get it aligned properly. And then you have two screws to install it. Now, if you do want a cover plate to cover up any other holes for your old thermostat, that is separate and you can purchase that from the Google store. So let's go ahead and get this installed. To get this set up, make sure you have the latest version of the Google Home app. Now I do wanna mention that even though this is a Nest thermostat, you will not be using the Nest app. This will now all be done right within the Google Home app. So we're gonna open this up. Now next we're gonna make sure we're using the proper account so you can change that by tapping on your profile right there. Next we're going to tap the plus in the top left. And then we're going to select setup device. And we're going to choose set up new device in your home and we're gonna choose the proper home. Then we're gonna scroll down to the bottom and select set up a different device. Next, and now you're gonna choose what you are trying to set up. So we're gonna scroll down and here we have thermostat. Now we're going to scan the QR code on the back. Now it's going to run us through the setup agreed to the terms. So this could take about 30 minutes. You're gonna learn about your home wiring, removing your old thermostat, connecting to your HVAC system, and connecting the thermostat to Wi-Fi and installing updates, and then using your new thermostat. And here it does mention that in order to get the critical updates, you will need to have Wi-Fi to be able to use this device. You can use it without Wi-Fi, but I think it's really important you do have Wi-Fi in your home for this device. So here are the tools that you will need and make sure that your current system is heating and cooling properly before starting and installing. And over here, we can see that it is currently working properly. Now we need to turn off the power to our old thermostat from the circuit breaker. I've turned off the power to the furnace and here when I adjust the thermostat, nothing happens. 
So next, now we're going to remove our old cover. And here it's saying if your thermostat's installed on an electrical box, you can find out more info there. And mine is not. Take a photo of your wiring so you can refer to it later. Skip that here. And here it says that if your old thermostat has a 120 volt or 240 volt standard wires or thick wires with wire nuts, your system is high voltage and not compatible. So I don't see any of those options on my old thermostat, so not high voltage. And here it says remove any jumper wires that you have connected. So I don't have any of those. Here it says some thermostat wire connectors have two sets of labels one for conventional systems and one for systems with a heat pump. So I don't have two labels. Which wires do you have? So here I have a Y1, I have a G, I have a W1, and I have an RH. And then select next. And this is where you want to use the wire label stickers right here and label your wires. Now mine are currently labeled from the other Nest thermostat, so I'm just gonna leave those as is. And now it says remove them one at a time and attach the label. And next we're going to remove our old thermostat. Now it's asking if we are going to use the trim kit I am not going to use a trim kit. Now we're going to pull all the wires through the base plate and mark where you will screw it in and then make sure that it is level. And here you can see there is a slight difference on the screw holes from the second gen and the new Nest thermostat. So here I'm gonna put in one screw, make sure the bubble is level and then place the other one in. Next we're going to insert the wires into the terminals right on the inside portion. When inserting them, press down and push in. Okay, all wires have been connected. I did relabel them just because the labels were about to fall off, so these should last a little bit longer. And make sure all the cables are here inside this little area. Next, we're going to take the new Nest thermostat, remove the battery pull tab, and then we're going to attach it and it should click on. Now we're going to turn the power back on. Next, we're going to configure our thermostat. Here it is looking for the device, choose our language. Next, we're going to test our system's power. So this is gonna make sure that power is coming to the device from our HVAC system. Start the test. And here it's saying the C wire is recommended. Installing a C wire will deliver consistent power to your thermostat. Without a C wire, your thermostat will work with your system, but may experience the following issues. Reduced battery life, motion sensing will be disabled, occasional disconnecting from Wi-Fi, and unexpected activation of heating and cooling. I think I might have to install this later, but I currently don't have one, so we'll see how it's like without it. And what is your heat fuel source? And here we have a gas heat fuel source, and then we have forced air. And then here it's asking if the fan should activate when calling for heat. By default, the Nest thermostat will rely on the system to activate the fan, when the furnace is running. If you test the furnace and notice that the fan is not activating, you can change this later. So we're gonna say don't activate. We're gonna let it run all on its own. And now it's asking, what do you want to use today? Do you wanna use it in heating or cooling? It's a little cold outside, so let's stick with heating. So now it has turned on the heater. Your thermostat can now control heating and cooling. So over here on the side, oh, all we have to do is swipe our finger right there and we can change the temperature. So indoor, it says it's 61. So let's turn that off right now. Next, we're going to connect this to Wi-Fi, install critical updates, and set basic temperatures. Now we're going to connect it to Wi-Fi. So choose your Wi-Fi network. You may need to enter your Wi-Fi password if you haven't done so before in the Google Home app. That did take several attempts to connect to Wi-Fi, but now we are connected. Next, we're going to choose our address. This is going to help with home and away routines. So if your family leaves the house, it will automatically turn off the heater. So it's not gonna heat when you're away, which is kind of cool. So the address is correct. And now we're gonna choose where we want this thermostat in our Google Home. So we're gonna choose upstairs hallway. And here we can name the device. So right now it's saying upstairs hallway. Sure, let's stick with that. All right, now we can save energy with scheduled temperatures. So now that you've installed the thermostat, you can save energy by scheduling temperatures for each part of your day. 
Your thermostat can also check if anyone's home automatically to adjust the temperature. So now we're going to create our schedule. So the main difference between this and the Nest Learning thermostat is it kind of automatically learned from you using the thermostat to change the temperature. But with the new Nest thermostat, it's going to be more based on schedules that you set here in the Google Home application. First, we're going to set temperature presets. We're going to create a schedule and then set home and away routines. So next we can customize our temperature preset. Tap each item to customize the temperatures. Look for the leaf for energy savings. So here it's saying comfort would be between 69 and 75 degrees. So that's going to have heating and cooling on. Here you have eco, so it would go down really low or really high, and that's best when no one's home. And then here you have sleep, so you want it a little more fine-tuned where it's going to get to the lower temperatures or the high temperatures. So if we tap on comfort, here we can adjust what we like our comfort level to be. So if it's going to be below, let's say 68 degrees, I want the heater to come on. And then here, if it's above 75 degrees, you can have the cooler turn on. And here it's saying that is the suggested temperature in the US. And then if we go down, here you can see it showing us that leaf, and that's when it's going to save you energy when you have the temperatures set to the leaf. So let's go ahead, keep this up at 67. Select done. So that is our comfort level. Now we can set the eco temperature. So we can come in here, we can see that those are both leafs. Here you have 11 degrees lower than comfort setting, and here you have seven degrees higher than comfort cooling. That looks good. And now we have sleep. So um, I really like the temperature to go down a bit when we're sleeping, so we'll go down to 65. And then in the summer, it would go up to 75 before the cooler turns on. That works great. All right, now that's set. Next. Now you have the option to automatically change the temperature with a schedule. So by setting a schedule, you can save energy and you can have the preferred temperatures at the right time. Now it's going to run us through a week and we can control what level it's going to set at that time of the day. By default, it's showing four different options. So here in the morning, we can set comfort. So we could set when that's going to turn on. So let's say we have that set at 7 a.m. And you can choose, do you want it comfort, do you want it eco, or do you want it to be sleep? So that's the comfort temperature. So then here in the afternoon, it's saying it's gonna switch to eco mode, where it's gonna set the high and the low temperature. And that's kind of nice because in the morning, once the home heats up, usually the sun then takes care of it the rest of the day. And so you may want to turn on eco, so you're gonna save energy, or you want it to keep a consistent comfort level, you could adjust that to comfort. So I'm gonna just stick with that for now. And then in the evening, it could turn on the comfort level so it would warm it up. And then here at night, it's going to sleep. Now we can go through and adjust this per day. So let's say on Wednesday, I don't want it to turn on the eco level. We're home more, we want it to be more comfortable. Then I can have it set just like that. And let's say our schedule is complete. Now the last option is set up home and away routines. So this means that if the devices that are connected to your account leave the home, it's automatically going to change to a different comfort level so that you save energy while you're away. Once you set it up, the thermostat will use the eco temperatures when everyone's away and return to your scheduled or last used temperature when the first person comes home. So let's set that up. Here we can start our home and away routines with present sensing. So you can use your phone's location and device sensors to tell the home app when someone's home and when everyone's away. If you use this feature with phone location, it works best when everyone in the home participates. So now we need to turn on location for present sensing. Now for this feature to work, Google will need access to your location and it will keep a recent history of your location, but you can delete that data in the settings. Now you can make it so that it won't track your location, but then you won't be able to use the present sensing. So I like to use that, so I'm going to agree. And now it's asking, do you want the home app to access this device all the time, or do you want it to only use it while you're using the app? And to have the best functionality, you're going to want to allow all the time. Now we need to choose what device are going to change when we are home or away. So here we have the new Nest thermostat, and this will also work with the other generation thermostats. And then here it will also work with Nest Protect as that is a motion sensor in the home. And then here we're going to confirm our address. And here we're going to adjust the pin to make sure that it correctly knows where our home actually is on the map. All right, now this thermostat has been added to our home away routines. 
Next, we have a feature called heating and cooling system alerts. So Google will be able to alert you if it detects there is a problem with your heating or cooling system, and you'll be notified in the Google Home app. And then you can easily book a pro service to come and help fix that if you do have any issues. All right, that is now set up. So let's learn more about what the thermostat can do. So over here on the side, we saw that before, but we can easily swipe up or down to change the temperature. Down here at the bottom, it's saying the current temperature. And then if we want to change modes, we tap on the side, and now we can scroll through and see different modes. So here at the top, it's showing the date, the current temperature outside, and it's showing the current indoor temperature and the humidity. Scroll down, here we have the current mode. Here we have the hold option. Here you can adjust the fan. And here we have settings, which I have an equipment error. All right, we are all done. Great, so now in the Google Home app, you should see this thermostat option. So we can tap on the thermostat. I still have my old thermostat in here, but I'm gonna choose the Nest thermostat. And now you have all of these controls right within the app. So here I can adjust the temperature by dragging. I can also press the button to change. And then we can easily adjust some of the settings here. So here we can change the mode, heat, cool, heat, cool, or off. Here we can change to one of our temperature presets. So comfort, eco, or sleep. Here you have the hold temperature. So you can hold the current temperature, you can hold the comfort level or eco, and then you can say what time you want it to end. So maybe you're having a family event, you want it to hold a certain temperature until that event's over, you would be able to do that right here. And then last, we have the option for the fan. So you can turn on the fan for a certain amount of time, but right now it's currently set to auto to just kind of work on its own. Up here at the top, we have our energy dashboard. So this is going to show you kind of your history of using your Nest thermostat. You can see the day, the week, and the month. Now I just set this up, so there's not much information here. So we'll come back to this in a bit to see all that it shows. And then if we go back to the main page, here we have the settings. And in the settings is where we can adjust different parts of the device. So first we have device information. So up here you can adjust a few different things. You can change the name, you can change the home or where it's placed. And then here you can also change the clock format. Next you have sharing. So if you wanna share this with others in your home, you would go to household and you would invite them to your Google household. Next we have notifications. So here we can set a air filter notification. So we wanna turn that on. So we will get reminders about filters. And then here it's saying, when did you last replace your filter? And I replaced it in October. So this will tell you when to replace it based on how often your system runs instead of just a set amount of time. Then down here, we have the present sensing features. So if you want to adjust anything about present sensing, you can come in here. And so it's saying it's using this phone's location. Here it's using me. And then it's also using my wife's device. And here you can change your present sensors right there. Then we have the thermostat. So in the thermostat settings, we can set if we want it to be Fahrenheit or Celsius. Here we can change the click sound. So right now, you hear the click sound when I adjust it, you can turn that off. Here we have wake up display. So we can have it wake up when we approach it or only when we press it. And then here you have what your equipment is. So we have gas, forced air. So you could come in here and adjust your heat configuration. Here you have wiring so you can see what you do have set up on your thermostat. Here it mentions Nest Protect to manage smoke and CO emergency shutoff go to the works with protect settings in the Nest app to adjust that. So here, since I do have a Nest Protect, so in the Nest Protect settings, we would go to works with Nest Protect, and here we could adjust when it's going to shut off. Next, we have temperature preferences. So if we want to adjust those different comfort levels we set, we can come in here and do that. So here we have the temperature presets. We can go and adjust our comfort, our eco, and our sleep. And down here at the bottom, you have the option to create a custom preset. And then here we have safety temperature. So no matter what, no matter what your settings are, it would automatically turn on the heat if it gets to 40 degrees within your home. And you could also set a cooling safety temperature as well. And then here you have the different nest sense settings. And then here we have early on. So it's automatically going to start heating and cooling early to reach the temperature at the scheduled time. So when you're home, heating is going to be turned on we could choose the maximum duration of that time. So let's say um, you don't want it to be 
on for more than five hours, that's where you would adjust this. And here you have the cooling options down here and you could adjust that for the cooling. Next you have Airwave. So this lowers the air conditioning cost by automatically shutting off your compressor at the right time. It uses the fan to spread the remaining cool air throughout your home so it doesn't just stay in your vents. Next we have Time to Temp. This will see how long it takes to reach the target temperature and this setting is always on. And then last we have Leaf. So this feature is always running as well. Leaf appears when you have adjusted to an energy savings temperature. Leaf is always running. So that's your temperature preferences. Next, we have the option to adjust our schedule. So if you wanna fix anything in your schedule, you can come in here. Now up here, you do have an option to adjust the fan as well. So you have temperature schedule and a fan schedule. And down at the bottom, you could copy a certain schedule and then you could copy it to a certain day. So if you have one set schedule you want every day, you can just come in here and say, I wanna copy that to all days. You select the days, hit done, and it will then copy it to those days. And up here in the menu, you do have an option to clear the certain schedule you're looking at or clear the weekly schedule so that you could start fresh. And last, you have the energy dashboard. So you already saw that on the main page of how that works. And then at the top, it is giving me the error that it will work, but if I add a C wire, that's gonna help avoid potential power issues in the future. So one of my favorite features of the second gen Nest thermostat is when you walk up to the display, it automatically shows you the current temperature. Now that is supposed to work on here, but because I don't have that C wire, it's not working. So I decided I need to install it so I can show you all the features it has. So I went and picked up some 18 over five uh, thermostat wire. I'm gonna reroute the wire to my furnace, get this set up properly, and then show you the full feature set. If you wanna see how I installed the C wire, please let me know in the comments below and I'll do a full video about that. All right, we have all of our wires now put in correctly with the common wire. Let's go ahead and plug this back on and turn on the power. And look at that, I walked up to it and it turned on. Let's go ahead and check the app. So here under thermostat, go into the settings. There you can see the C air is now gone. So that was a mission successful. Now, even though the air disappeared, it still was showing that I didn't have a C wire in the settings and I couldn't figure out how to go through the setup to add it. So I ended up factory resetting the Nest thermostat and then it showed I had all my wiring set successfully. Next, let me show you how this will work with your different assistants. Let's start with Google Assistant. So if you have any type of Nest speaker, so a Nest Mini, here I have a Nest Hub, or any other Google Assistant speaker, you will be able to use the thermostat. Set the temperature to 72 degrees. Got it, setting the Nest thermostat to 72 degrees. So there it turned it on, so it is now warming up to 72 degrees. You then can control any other portion of the Nest. So you can change the mode, you can set presets, and so on. Set Nest Thermostat to Cool. Got it. Changing the Nest Thermostat to Cool. I could have also said Change to Heat, Change to Heat Cool, or Set to Off. So all of those functions will work. Next, let's change the preset. Set Nest Thermostat to Eco. Got it. Setting the Nest Thermostat to your Eco temperature. So there it set it to Eco. I could also say Set Nest Thermostat to Comfort. All right. Setting the Nest Thermostat to your Comfort temperature. And then since this is a display, I also have the option to just use the touchscreen. So here I can set the temperature, I could tap on mode and change the mode right here, just like that. I could then go into my presets and set to sleep, comfort, or eco. And then here I have the option to turn on hold. So if I want it to remain at the same temperature for a certain amount of time, I have the option to do that. And then down here at the bottom, we have the option to turn on the fan. Set Nest Thermostat fan to on. Okay, turning on fan on the Nest Thermostat. Set Thermostat fan off. All right, turning off fan on the Nest Thermostat. So you really can control every aspect of the Nest Thermostat just by voice using a Google Assistant speaker. It is nice to have the display here because I can simply swipe down, tap on climate controls, and then it will take me right there and I can see the current indoor temperature and then I can easily adjust the temperature by pressing on the screen or rotating this so it makes it really convenient. 
Another feature on the smart displays is if you just tap on the screen, right here it will show you different smart devices and we can see the Nest thermostat right here. I just tap on the little arrow, it takes me to those settings and then I can turn up the heat right there. Now let's go ahead and test this out using Amazon's voice assistant. Now to use the Nest thermostat with your Amazon assistant, all we need to do is head into the Amazon assistant app. We're going to select more, going to go to skills and games, and then we're going to search for Google Nest. So here we're gonna use the Google Nest skill. Now you will need to enable and link your account and then allow permissions for Amazon to access your different Nest devices. So you have the Nest thermostat, you also have Nest cameras in there. Now once you have done that, we're gonna to head to the devices tab and I've already added it into my room. So here in the hallway, you can now see that I have the upstairs hallway thermostat. So now here in the app, I have the option to increase the heat and then we can see the current temperature in the home. If we select settings, we don't really get many options there, but let's see what we can do with our Echo device here. Alexa. Set upstairs hallway to cool. Alexa. Set upstairs hallway to heat cool. It's set to auto. Alexa. Set upstairs hallway to 68 degrees. Auto's keeping the temperature between 65 and 70. Alexa. Set upstairs hallway to 72 degrees. The heat's set to 72. And then sometimes it will show the display of the temperature and then you can easily tap on it to increase or decrease the temperature. Set upstairs hallway to sleep. I don't know how to set upstairs hallway to that setting. Set upstairs hallway to eco. It's set to energy saver. Turn fan on on upstairs hallway. And there it did turn on the fan. So for the most part, all the voice commands are there with Amazon Assistant. The only exception is I couldn't get the comfort mode or the sleep mode to work, but I could turn on the fan. I could change the heating, cooling, heat cool, and even turn it off, and then easily change the temperature. So that is how you can use Amazon Assistant with the new Nest thermostat. Now that I've been using the Nest thermostat for about a week, let's go into the thermostat and check out the dashboard and see what the history of the thermostat looks like. So all we need to do is head up here into the little chart icon and here it is showing today's current use. So you can see the individual hour and how much was used during that hour. So if I tap on an hour, here it says it used 18 minutes from six to seven a.m. And then there it used 26 minutes of heating from five to six a.m. So it's really cool that you have hour to hour how much has been used. And then here the last few hours, nothing has been used. And here it's saying today it's used an hour and 48 minutes of heating or cooling. And here you can see that it is heating. Now over here you have the option for leafs earned. So every time you manually change the temperature so that it's at a lower or a higher temperature, it then could earn you a leaf. And today I haven't touched the thermostat so it hasn't changed that at all. If you wanna go back a day, here we can see yesterday we used heating and the total for the day was two hours and 10 minutes and we earned one leaf because yesterday morning I turned it down, it didn't need to be as hot, so it shows that you did that. Now I actually think that's pretty impressive. It's been pretty cold lately, so only two hours of heating is great. Um, so again, we can go back further day to day. Now if we want to see the full week, we can just tap on the week. And so here it's showing you for the last five days from November 9th to the 15th, how much we have used. So here you can see on Monday, I used two hours and 49 minutes and then you can go through and see those. And then it also shows you what days you earned leafs. So here I have earned two leafs. There the week total was 11 hours and 42 minutes, and that is an increase from 78% of last week. And last week is when I set it up. So that will change as we use this longer. And then if I wanna go back a week, I can just tap right here, and then it can load up last week. And here I can see that on the Thursday here, I used 19 minutes of heating and an hour and 41 minutes of cooling and then we only earned one leaf. And let's head to the month view. So here you can see the individual days on how much you actually use. So November 13th, November 12th, November 11th. It has all of that right there. I've earned three leafs and used 17 hours and 50 minutes of heating and cooling. And here we don't have a previous last month stat yet. 
And then my daily average is an hour and 22 minutes. So that's kind of the information that you get right here in the app. I think it's really great that now everything is included right in the Google Home app without having to head over to the Nest app. So it's really nice, it is all right here. So after browsing through your history and you wanna go back to today, you just tap on this calendar icon right here and then it will jump back to today. So those are the stats for the Nest thermostat. And then if you wanted to change your calendar or anything, you just head up here to the settings and then you can select schedules and this is where you would adjust all of that. The last thing I wanna show you in the Google Home app is that if you go back to the home page, select the plus and then scroll down and go to rebates and rewards. In here, there is a link to a website where you possibly could get a rebate or a coupon code for a Nest thermostat. So here we're gonna go to the website. You can search your zip code right there but down here it's saying there's a $50 instant rebate that I could use from my local power company. Or scrolling down, I could get a $50 rebate on a Nest thermostat. So I think it's really cool that you have these options and it makes buying a Nest thermostat even more cost effective. Not only is it going to save you on your cooling and heating bill, but it's also going to cost less than it would have without this rebate. So definitely check this out. Make sure you go through the process to redeem that. Maybe a little different for your area, but that's one other thing that you can do before or after you purchase your Nest thermostat. And look at that, I'm actually getting $75 back, sweet. Now at the Google store, they do have a comparison if you're deciding between the Nest thermostat and the third generation Nest Learning thermostat. So here, let's go through some of the main differences. First, you have the cost difference. Uh, they're gonna do the same thing in saving energy. They have the savings finder. They have turn itself down when you're away. With the Nest thermostat, the setup's gonna be in the Google Home app. Here, the setup's gonna be in the Nest app. You can control these from anywhere. So even if you are away from your home, you have access to them. Um, here it says they're easy to program. Now the main difference with the Nest Learning Thermostat is it is able to automatically learn your temperature preferences and creates your own schedule or you can do it manually. We're here on the Nest Thermostat, it is totally manual schedule. Here they both have HVAC system monitoring. You have 24 volt heating and cooling and so the Nest Thermostat may not work with as many systems. Here it does not have a trim plate. Here it does not work with the Nest temperature sensors. And then here they both have voice control and you can also use them with displays and they can work on Google Assistant and Amazon Assistant as well. Here they come in different colored options. And then on the third gen, you have the metal ring that you rotate where here you just have the touch controls on the side and it is a plastic housing. And so here the display is a mirror display. And over here you have the high res display with far sight to show you the time, temperature and weather. So that allows you to see it a little bit further away. And then here the Nest thermostat has a one year warranty where the Nest learning thermostat has a two year warranty. After using the Nest thermostat for the last week, I'm very impressed with all the things that it can do. I really like how it simplifies what a smart thermostat is. It's really convenient that it's all controlled right within the Google Home application. And it's nice that you can use your Google Assistant or even your Amazon Assistant to control it. Now compared to using this versus my old second gen Nest thermostat, I actually think that I prefer this. With the old thermostat, even though it was a learning thermostat, if we decided to change the temperature during the day at one time, it would start kind of changing it automatically at that time every day, even if we really didn't need to. So to fix that, I would have to go into the Nest app change the schedule and kind of fix that, where with the new Nest thermostat, I'm in total control of the schedule. I know exactly what's happening in the morning, what's happening in the afternoon, and what's happening when we're sleeping. And so usually we're having the temperature be the same every day, so I really don't need it to adjust constantly so much. And then I can easily change this based on seasons. It just takes a minute to do that in the app or so. So I think we've actually used heating and cooling less since installing this because it's no longer using those old schedule that I have. I now have my new program schedule in here and it's just working really, really nice. So I really haven't had any problem with the Nest thermostat. Now the only issue I did have was setting it up. I had to go through the setup two times to finally get it to connect and then I needed to add a C wire. Now it really depends on what system you currently have if you need to add that C wire or not. Now for me, it was pretty important to add it because I wanted to have the motion sensing functions where it would automatically turn on 
And then it's also going to help make sure the batteries inside stay charged and that they are working properly. And it's going to have a better Wi-Fi connection as well. I also noticed that when you do look at the display in lower lighting at the right angle, sometimes you do see the LCD display. Really not an issue, but sometimes that does come through. So that is the new Nest thermostat overall. I'm really impressed. I think it has some really great features. So the only real thing that we really need to get used to is controlling it from the side here and tapping. Again, this is not a touch screen. Don't touch it, you'll get your fingerprints on it. But uh, it's easy to clean off, which is really nice, and it has a really nice look to it. So if you have any further questions about the new Nest thermostat, please let me know in the comments below. I'll also leave a link to it in the description down there that you can check out if you wanna learn more. And if you wanna see more of the Google Nest products that have come out recently, you can check out my playlist over here on the side. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.